Hey, AJ Hartley here, novelist, Shakespeare professor. I, I had not intended to say anything today, but I find that I, I can't just sit here. Um, so yesterday we had another shooting in the US another mass shooting at another school, 21 people killed, mostly elementary school children by an 18 year old with guns. And I don't know what to say because it seems like everything has been said before. Everything has been reset for decades. You know, Columbine, Parkland, Sandy Hook. Um, and we still have to listen to the rhetoric from the gun lobby and the Republicans senators who value their Second Amendment lunacies over the lives of ordinary children. I, I'm conscious that this is going to piss people off and I'm sure I'm going to lose subscribers and okay, whatever. And don't bother posting your pro-gun bullshit on this because I will simply delete it. I'm, I try to be open and have conversations with people, but this is just fucking nonsense and I will not give it the time of day. Um, it's just extraordinary to me that in the 21st century, we're still having these conversations in a supposedly civilized country and that, <laughs> and that the obstruction to any kind of common sense gun legislation is being driven by the so-called right to life party, which is, you know, laugh or cry, right? And I particularly don't know how to address this because I kind of already did, you know. I, I don't talk about it much <clears throat> on online or on YouTube particularly. Uh, I mean, I've been running this channel um, for, uh, for two years, you know, posting videos about the stuff that interests me and so on. But a little bit before that, I published a book called Impervious, a novel, a fantasy novel. Um, I'll put the, the, um, this is the, the U S edition that was published by Falstaff books. And this is the UK edition that was published by, uh, Uclan publishing. And this is a story about, a, um, a teenage girl who, uh, it's a fantasy novel, right? Teenage girl who gets a, a mysterious pendant and it gives her abilities with blades a particular sword, ultimately. And she has to become a sort of champion, Buffy the Vampire Slayer-esque kind of story. But in the course of the story, in the course of the novel, it's a short book, it's only 50-some thousand words, um, you start to realise that there's something a little off with the the narrative and that the the fantasy dimension of the story may not, in fact, be real and that you gradually realize uh, that the character is actually experiencing something very real, very traumatic, very American. And that's what the book's about, which is why I feel like I've kind of said what I have to say about this. And I should say also that that book didn't emerge out of just a sort of creative vacuum. It, it emerged out of very specific circumstances. Um, three years ago, uh, I was on campus at UNC Charlotte uh, for an end of year celebration with the theatre students. We were in the Black Box Theatre in Robinson Hall when we got a series of emergency texts from the school saying that it was an active shooter on campus two buildings over, maybe, I don't know, 150 yards over. Um, 
run, hide, fight with what we were told. And, uh, and we hid, we locked ourselves in dressing rooms. I, I had a group of students with me and we barricaded ourselves inside and turned the lights off and sat in silence and hoped that he wouldn't come in. Um, I don't know how long we were there, an hour, maybe two, um, until the sort of SWAT teams started clearing the, clearing the campus. Um, and six students had been shot. Um, only two of them died, which means, of course, that nobody talks about this anymore because the death body count wasn't high enough, you know. But I talk about it. I talk about the people who died, Reed Parlier and Riley Howell, to whom my book is dedicated. Riley um, was shot multiple times in various parts of his body and at increasingly close range because he attempted to disarm the gunman successfully, as it turned out though he died in the process and saved the lives of his classmates. And after the fact, um, first day or so I was okay. And then I kind of wasn't, you know, and I would sort of have panic attacks in the grocery store and things like that, you know, um, and gradually came to the realization at my family's urging that the only way I could deal with the experience was to write about it, which is kind of what I do, right? As a novelist, I take the stuff that's in my life and I turn it into stories as a way of making it manageable. So that's what I did. That's where, that's where Impervious came from. I never really got a chance to to promote it or, or, or to talk about it much because, of course, as the book came out, we were plunged in the, literally right away, we were in the first month of the pandemic <clears throat> and mired in various other political issues in this country. Um, so I never got to do book signings or anything like that. I'm going to do a couple in the, in the UK this summer to kind of um, make up for it, I guess. So, you know, as I say, it feels like I've already said what I have to say about this. And I don't know what else to add. Um, except to say, you know, be alert to these things. Vote. Don't assume that they can't happen to you, because if we've learned anything in the last few years, it's that they can literally happen anywhere. You know, schools, grocery stores, um, concert venues. Uh, I mean, anywhere. And it, it may feel like this is an abstract thing that will never touch you, but it absolutely can. Um, so, I don't want to send hopes and prayers. I want to send action, political action, that will change the current situation. And if there's anybody watching who can do anything about that, even if it's just voting in your own local elections, then please do. There are organizations also promoting common sense gun laws. Um, I advocate for them. Um, and, you know, this is not going to become a political commentary channel. Uh, I, I may never talk about anything like this again, but after another 21 people killed yesterday, I, I just can't not say anything. I hope you understand that. And be well, be safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.